Hello and welcome back. My name is Bram from the Jugend iGym Teams and now we will discuss our second tutorial. In this tutorial we will calculate the expected length of a certain PCR fragment based on the sequences of the forward and reverse primers. So let's have a look at our um, Jupyter notebook. So it's number two, PCR length, that is situated in the second folder, the folder two length PCR fragment. So first of all, as in the first tutorial, we will set our working directory as before, and then we will obtain the nucleotide sequence of a Belgian SARS-CoV-2 isolate. And this one we already discussed in the first video, so it's just a copy-paste of the code as in the first file. If we print this file, we, can, we get this, of course. Okay, so now this is the new part of uh, this tutorial. So first of all, we need to open the BE isolate file. So we say f is open the file name and then R for read. And then we say, okay, we want to extract only the text information of that F object. So we say BE isolate is F.read. Okay, so now we have to import both sequences of the primers into the script. That we will do using the seek command. So we say from bio.seq import seek. And then we will um, put both primer sequences into the script by using seek and then the sequence of the reverse and the forward primers into the seek object. So for the forward primer we say it's seek and then it's sequence. Reverse primer is seek and the reverse primer sequence. But if you want to retrieve the reverse primer sequence in the uh, BE isolate file, you first have to use the reverse complement of this primer. And we can do that by using rvp.reverse complement and save it as rvp underscore rc. We convert both primer sequences to a string, and then we will search for the location of both primers using the find function. So we say match is beisolate.find, and then the forward primers uh, sequence, and match to the same, but for the reverse complement of the reverse prime. Now, what is this match? Exactly, that match and match2 are two numbers. And these those numbers indicate the location of the last nucleotide of the prime. So for example, match will be from, as if we say this is nucleotide 1 from the fragment, then this number, of the, the match number, will be the number of this nucleotide. So the last nucleotide of the forward prime. For match2, it's the same, but for the reverse prime. And we know that the last nucleotide of the reverse primer is this one. So now, if we want to calculate the length of the fragments, so from here until here, we have to say that this exactly as match two minus match one, so that you only obtain this region of, this, of the sequence, plus the length of the forward primer, so that we have this length plus this length, so that we obtain the length of this complete chunk of the DNA fragment. And if we only want the length of the sequence between the primers, we have to do match2 minus match to this chunk, and then we say minus the length of the reverse primer, that we exclude this one from our calculation, and so the number that we obtain is the length to the number of nucleotides between the primers of this region that I am now indicating with arrows. And that is something we can put in the print command. So we say the length, ex the expected length of the PCR fragment is match two minus match plus the length of the forward primer, base pair. So we say we uh, get. The expected length of the PCR fragment is 2060 base pairs. And the same with the length between the primers, match 2 minus match minus the length of the reverse primer base pairs. And so we get the length between the two primers is 2020 base pairs. 
and this is a way how to calculate expected length of a PCR fragment. I hope all to see you soon for our third tutorial.